by all accounts, Devotion was a great game. It was a twisted and masterful first-person horror title with a surprisingly heartwarming thread running through it. When Devotion came to Steam in February, it quickly earned thousands of positive reviews. And then China got involved. Taiwanese developer Red Candle Games removed Devotion from Steam just days after its launch. Players had discovered a stamp that referenced Chinese President Xi Jinping and Winnie the Pooh in the game, mocking the leader with a popular and therefore controversial meme. Chinese players review bombed Devotion on Steam, and Red Candle developers apologized a handful of times, saying they never intended to include the image in the final version. Devotion disappeared from Steam. In early July, Chinese authorities revoked the business license of Indievent, the China-based company that had published Devotion in the country. Soon after, Red Candle posted a letter on Twitter apologizing to players and business partners, and saying the game wouldn't be back online anytime soon. This is Chinese censorship in action. After two years of intense upheaval in the Chinese video game market, and with new laws restricting creative freedoms and gigantic companies like Tencent gaining traction across the globe, China today has enormous influence over the trajectory of the entire industry. When it comes to Chinese video game censorship, devotion is just the beginning. China overtook the United States as the largest video game market in the world in 2016, just one year after lifting a 15-year ban on all foreign video game consoles. That meant no PS1, no PlayStation 2, 3, or 4, no GameCube, Wii, or Wii U, and no Xbox, Xbox 360, or Xbox One. Dismantling this law opened up new revenue pipelines and ended a period of digital isolation that had pushed three generations of Chinese players toward PC and mobile gaming. And this all helps explain two current phenomena, China's position as an esports powerhouse and its apparent love of mobile games with microtransactions. Chinese authorities took a step backward in early 2018 when they froze all new video game licenses for nine months, temporarily banning sales of contemporary video games across the country. The freeze ended in December, but it came with a handful of caveats. We'll get to those in just a moment. By the end of 2018, despite a nine-month freeze on new video games, China was still the industry's worldwide leader, and the gap was growing. Though the US is traditionally at the center of the video game conversation, China is far more significant for developers in many ways, including sheer audience size. Here are two facts that you can take to pub trivia. As of 2018, the US had 166 million video game players. China had 620 million. It's not even close. Numbers like these are a major reason games like Diablo Immortal exist. Late last year, when Blizzard revealed Diablo Immortal, an online mobile RPG designed with microtransactions in mind, Western audiences immediately ripped the studio to shreds. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC or is this just strictly mobile forever? The current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, phone. right? You can play on your tablet too. Players who were used to a PC-first approach to game development weren't prepared to be excited about a mobile experience and couldn't imagine why Blizzard would do this to them. China, meanwhile, represents a complete half of the global mobile marketplace, with 600 million players who really don't mind microtransactions. Mobile is the fastest growing segment in gaming, likely to be worth $100 billion by 2021, and most of that money is coming from China. Remember those caveats? So, when China legalized new video game sales in December, it also established a review board just for games. China's Online Game Ethics Committee is tasked with ensuring all games sold in the country adhere to restrictive standards when it comes to violence, religious content, drug use, obscenity, gambling, national security and reputation, and other core traits. Additionally, China's State Administration of Press and Publication is imposing time limits on minors, demanding developers implement kill switches in their PC and mobile titles that cut off playtime after a certain number of hours. The most notable game to add age-based time limits in China is League of Legends. In July, Riot Games implemented a two-hour time limit for underage players based on their national ID numbers, which are used to make accounts. The Communist Party of China is already using national IDs to track playtime in other online PC games like Fortnite and World of Warcraft. 
And in 2017, the massive Chinese publisher Tencent added time restrictions to the mobile title Honor of Kings, known stateside as Arena of Valor. And we've finally made our way to Tencent. It's hard to overstate how large Tencent is as a tech company or how much influence it exerts on the video game industry every day in a million silent ways. Tencent is one of the top 10 companies in the world based on stock value, coming in at $441 billion. Tencent Interactive Entertainment covers all of Tencent's gaming initiatives and it either owns or has a stake in dozens of Western studios, including Epic Games, Riot Games, Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft, Blue Hole, Supercell, Grinding Gear Games, and Paradox Interactive. Tencent is the reason Ubisoft even exists as it does today. In 2018, Tencent prevented a hostile takeover from Ubisoft's former parent company Vivendi by buying all of Vivendi's shares in the studio and claiming 5% for itself. This has already led to a sticky censorship situation for Ubisoft. In November, as they prepared to launch the popular online shooter Rainbow Six Siege in Asian markets, Ubisoft Montreal developers announced they would alter all versions of the game to comply with Chinese regulations. The team removed all skulls, slot machines, blood splatter, and neon signs of exotic dancers, sanitizing the images or scrubbing them completely. The studio promised these changes wouldn't impact gameplay in any way, but players weren't having it. A few weeks later, Ubisoft Montreal reversed the decision and reverted to the original art, citing outcry from players. This is only going to happen more as China remains in the global video game marketplace. China is a large yet historically isolated nation, and it's only recently opened up its borders to international markets, particularly in tech. As it stands, 75% of China's video game profits are internal, but with the removal of the licensing ban and new rules allowing foreign consoles, companies around the world are trying to crack the mainland. It's not just video games either. Google has been fighting US regulators, activists, and its own employees as it attempts to establish a China-specific search engine complete with censored results. As of July, the project has reportedly been canceled, though it's common sense that Google is still working on ways to tap into China's base of 800 million internet users. All of this, the laws, the reversals, the billions of dollars at stake, led to a situation in 2019 where Devotion, a horror game created by a small Taiwanese company with no legal allegiance to China, could be forced offline by Chinese authorities because it had Winnie the Pooh as background art. This is how Chinese video game censorship works in 2019. Oh, bother. For more in-depth analysis of the global video game marketplace, subscribe and stay tuned to Engadget.